Hi everyone, I'm Peter Chu, a urologist from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Welcome again to the first Asian series of Grand Rounds in Urology. This is a series of talks by a group of Asian experts to talk about important urology topics from an Asian perspective. And today we are honored to have Professor Dai here to give a talk on a metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer in China. Professor Dai is currently the chief physician and director of the Department of Urology, Fudan University Shanghai Cancer Center. He has over 20 years of experience in treating urological cancers. Dr. Dai received six grants from national and provincial foundations and published more than 50 original articles in high impact journals as first or corresponding authors. He received numerous awards in recent years, including the top 10 young doctors of Fudan University, Outstanding Young Talent Training Plan of Shanghai Municipal Commission of Health and Family Planning, Nomination Award of Outstanding Urologist of Shanghai Muni Municipality, and Annual Influential Man of Shanghai Urological Association. So without further ado, uh, Professor Dai, please kindly give your lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter, for your introduction. Uh, it's my honor to give my lecture. Today, my topic is management of MCRPC in China. Uh, today, uh, I will give uh, the lecture about uh, the MCRPC. Uh, in uh, this lecture, I will talk four, I, I will talk four topics. First, uh, I will briefly introduce uh, what is MCRPC. Then I will summarize the standard of care for MCRPC in China. After that, I will talk the unmet medical lead in the management of MCRPC in China. And the last, I will introduce some key MCRPC studies and data from China. Metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer is required to meet the following three criteria. First, the patient serum testosterone level must be below 50 nanogram per dL. Second, biochemical progression or radio radiographic progression is confirmed. Third, the patient has evidence of metastasis. This graph shows that some MCRPC patients come from newly diagnosed MHSPC after a period of androgen deprivation therapy and failed to ADT. Others come from localized or locally advanced prostate cancer patients who experienced biochemical recurrence and developed a primary progressive MCRPC or NMCRPC. And at last, after a different period of uh, treatment, all these pa patients will progress to MCRPC. So the MCRPC is the last stage of prostate cancer and its prognosis is poor. Uh, this slide shows uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when uh, MHSPC and NMCRPC patients are treated with Traditionally, ADT, how long will it take for them to progress to MCRPC? The data from uh, Latitude study and Spartan study uh, gives us the, cons the answer. Patients in the control group of these studies were treated with ADT alone. You can find that for MHSPC patients, when they were treated with ADT alone, it only takes 12 months to progress to MCRPC. And for NMCIPC patients, if, uh, uh, it will only take 20 months to progress to MCIPC when they were treated with ADT alone. Uh, this graph shows the annual progression rate and annual all-cause mortality from different clinical status. You can find that compared to locally and localized and non-castrated and non-metastatic state, States, the MCRPC clinical states has the largest, has the highest rate of annual progression and mortality. Uh, this means that if you want to improve the treatment effects of MCRPC patients, the best way is to prevent the patients from entering MCRPC state, uh, stage. Uh, this slide shows uh, four, uh, four drugs approved for the treatment of uh, prostate cancer. You can find that uh, docetaxel was approved for the treatment of MCRPC uh, about two decades ago. Uh, 
acetylacetate uh, is approved for the treatment of MCRPC patients uh, who have minimal or who have minimal metastasis or no symptoms. Uh, Abiraterum and uh, anzalutamide was approved for the treatment of MCRPC patients for both post-docetaxel and docetaxel naive patients. Carbacetaxel is approved for patients with disease progression after treatment with docetaxel, and radium-223 is approved for patients with symptomatic bone metastasis without visceral metastasis. Um, currently, uh, we only have docetaxel, uh, abiraterum, and anzalutamide available in China. The other three drugs was not available. Uh, this year, uh, Olaparib was approved for the treatment of MCRPC uh, after 2PAP-A and 2PAP-B and profound studies, Olaparib Ola was uh, finally approved. Uh, I will introduce the uh, profound study uh, briefly. Uh, in this uh, clinical trial, uh, patients, all, all, all the patients included in this study were tested for their uh, DNA damage repair gene. The patients were classified into coho one and coho B. In coho one, the, all patients have BRAC1, BRAC2, and ATM mutation. Uh, and in coho B, coho B, uh, the patients will have other uh, DNA damage repair gene mutation. All the patients were random, randomly uh, assigned to Olaparib, uh, three uh, milligram uh, per day, uh, a BID. Uh, or the physician choice. The primary endpoint of this study is RPFS and the secondary endpoints including the overall survival. Uh, as you can see in both COHO uh, 1 and COHO B, all the uh, patient characteristics were well balanced between the two, uh, between the treatment group and the uh, control group. Uh, this slide shows uh, the primary endpoints of this study in COHO-1 patients. The medium image-based progression-free survival was significantly longer in Olaparib group than in the control group. Uh, and this, uh, this slide shows the overall survival. Uh, you can find it has also a significantly, a clinically significant uh, statistical significant difference between the uh, study, gr uh, study group and the control group. Uh, when uh, we put COHO-1 and COHO-B together, you can find in the whole population, uh, the median progression-free survival uh, by independent review was also significantly longer in the Olaparib group than in the control group. Uh, 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 5.8 months versus 3.5 months. So in this year, FDA approved Olaparib for adult patients with deleterious or suspected deleterious GM9 or somatic uh, homologous recombination repair uh, gene mutated MCRPC who have progressed after prior, uh, after prior treatment with azanutamide or abiraterum. Uh, currently, Olaparib is available in China. Uh, it is approved for the treatment of metastatic O ovarian cancer in China. Uh, and also the next gene uh, sequence test is also widely applied in China. So in the near future, uh, it will approve for the treatment of MCIPC patients in, the, in China, I think. Uh, then I will uh, talk something about the unmet medical need in the treatment of MCIPC patients. The first unmet need is lack of knowledge of the optimal sequence of treatment. As you can uh, see here, uh, although, uh, uh, although more than six drugs was approved for the treatment of MCRPC patients, uh, we don't know uh, which one is best for the first line treatment and which one is uh, best after the first line failure. Uh, the other uh, unmet medical need include uh, all these drugs uh, with improved over su overall survival, but uh, the uh, improvement is very, uh, very, very small. You can find here uh, uh, for the six drugs uh, which was approved uh, for the MCIPC patients, uh, the overall survival improvement only about three to 
five months, so it's very limited. Uh, the third unmet need is uh, in China is lack of treatment urgency. Uh, studies from uh, China showed that nearly 30% of patients did not receive lifelong life prolonging therapy after the initial diagnosis of MCIPC. These patients may be treated with uh, uh, some traditional uh, Chinese medicine or some uh, uh, anti-androgen, uh, I, I mean uh, uh, calutamide or flutamide. Uh, these drugs uh, uh, have been approved without overall survival benefit. Uh, the, the, uh, the third unmet, unmet need is economic problem. Uh, the price for these new drugs, including abiraterone, analutamide, and olaparib, is very expensive in China. So many, uh, many patients who were diagnosed, diagnosed with MCRPC are not able to afford these drugs. Uh, last, uh, I will go through some uh, key MCRPC studies and data from China. Uh, as we all know, uh, when a, uh, when a new drug is, is approved in American or uh, European, uh, it, uh, it, it, it is required to do a clinical trial in China. Uh, last, I will go through some uh, key MCIPC studies and data from China. Uh, as we all know, uh, when a new drug is, is approved uh, in America or in Europe, uh, it, it is required to do the same clinical study in the mainland China. Uh, this study is to uh, evaluate the abiraterone for MCRPC patients after docetaxel failure in the main main China in the mainland of China. Uh, it, uh, it has a positive out, outcome. And this study uh, from China uh, is uh, uh, investigated a new drug which is GT0918. This drug is a four. Uh, AR antagonist without agonist effects. This is a clinical one stage. This means uh, many uh, new drugs is in, uh, is uh, undergoing a clinical trial in the China. Uh, and uh, PISMA, uh, which is uh, met, uh, which is uh, 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 which is a uh, pro prostate specific membrane antigen. It is used in the image test. Uh, in MCRPC patients and also uh, investigated in the treatment of MCRPC patients. In China, these studies is, uh, uh, some studies have found positive outcomes. Uh, and these studies is from our center. Uh, we evaluated the clinical activity of abiraterone uh, in docetaxel naive and docetaxel resistant uh, uh, Chinese patients. Uh, and we also developed a nomogram to predict the overall outcome, overall survival for abiraterone treated MCIPC patients. And we also evaluated ARV7 uh, uh, and its role in the development and uh, progress, progression of uh, MCIPC. And we also uh, do some circulation tumor cell investigations uh, and we test uh, some tumor markers uh, in the patient circulating tumor cell. Use these markers to predict the outcome of MCRPC patients. Uh, uh, that's all. Uh, this is, uh, that's all. Thank you very much.